Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeremy Noye Peters. I'm the creative business and strategy lead for Glow Africa Africa Media. And I was invited today to talk about finding opportunities in the creative media space as an undergraduate. Musician, yeah. As much as creativity is, is, is a core function of our human existence, Every, uh, creativity is what makes us human. But there is a selected few of people, if a selected um, few people that get to turn creativity into actual cash. So for those um, pool of people, it's up to them to level up their skills to make sure that they, uh, they remain relevant. That is one. The next is service, right? You see, I'm not really talking about learn videography or learn how to write. I'm really talking about virtues that they need to have as people before we talk about, okay, you have to take this particular course if you want to go into photography, if you want to go into content writing, content creation, videography, name it. Creative functions are vast. But let's talk about those virtues you need to have that would keep you in the industry. Number one is your, the, 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 your skill. Number two is how you can serve people. Either as a business owner, you need to serve clients. Either as a creative in, in, in an agency, you need to serve your boss. Why I'm saying this is what keeps you in business, what keeps you in that space, what makes people want to work with you is your, your, your virtue of service to them. And lastly, having the mindset of a salesman. You can't take away sales from creativity because it's not the photograph that makes the money. It's the ability to sell that photograph that gives you the money. It's not the film itself that makes the money. But for people to say, I'm going to buy a movie ticket to come and watch your movie. I'm going to buy a ticket to come and see your, your art exhibition. So it's not the art that, com that, that makes its money for itself, but the ability for you to tell people to buy tickets to come and see your art exhibition. It's not the, the ad, the, the ad design on a magazine or TV that people buy, no but how you are able to tap into the emotions for them to say, okay, I'm going to vote with my wallet with this. So, like I, just to wrap up what I said, uh, the level of uh, skill hybridization, matching, matching multiple skills together, having the mindset of a salesman to sell anything, and lastly, serving people. I started by saying something because the, the, the pool of people we have here are uh, undergraduates. So, what I knew that they would take, I think I started, I stressed that out while I was talking is, um, never let your schooling get in the way of your education. Schooling just tests your brilliance. Schooling just makes sure that you remember what you were taught in the classroom. That is all schooling tests, tests you on. But education tests your street smartness, how you're able to communicate with people, build lasting relationships, how you're able to transform things, understanding not just the how, but the why. So never let your schooling get in the way of your education. Learn in the classroom, but make sure you are street smart. Make sure you learn what the market says. Make sure you learn what the market does. Make sure you learn how to sell in the market. Thank you. Never let your schooling get in the way of your education. Right? So, yes, school is wonderful. But then, I really started, I started to ponder on that thought when he said, never let your schooling get in the way of your education. So the next question is, what is schooling and what is education? What is the difference between both of them? Schooling is the, it's an ordered academic environment where the end goal is brilliant. So they test your ability to remember things. They test your ability to cram stuff that was taught to you in the classroom. That's all schooling does. Education is social grace. Your ability to interact with people, your street smartness. Right? You go to an event, you know your ethics, you know how to raise a bottle, a, 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 glass of, uh, a glass of champagne, you know how to make a toast, you know how to talk to people, you know how to network, you know how to interact with people. That is education. So let me just wrap it up again. Schooling, the, the end goal of schooling is brilliant. Your ability to remember stuff well. So they tell you A, B, C, D is all the L, is all the letters and alphabet. You go to the exam hall, you remember that. That's what schooling helps you. It tests your, your, your ability to remember things. Education is how smart you are on the street, how you can apply what you know. So while schooling shows you the how, education tells you or shows you the why. Right? So that's one of the things that really kept me going. Um, uh, one of the things that really kept me going. So I did not study, I don't know if you have people that study mass communication or anything around the arts, 
maybe mass communication, um, theater art, something around art. Though. Okay, so what did you study? In this elementary studies, also we have a couple of uh, uh, core members that study that at the back of the office. So now, what I'm doing currently, I'm into I'm into advertising and communication for brands, either for individuals for their personal brands or corporate organizations. Some of them will be Zen Finance. I'm sure you have seen these things. You've seen the, the banners for and um, people for Zen Finance, the Endless Service Center, uh, NCC, uh, West Africa. Let me not list the portfolio currently. That's not my point. So um, that this what, what I'm doing now is what I studied in school. Far from it. I studied something that had to do with how do I put it now? Something that had to do with uh, Google Maps, satellite tech, and how you make calls on your phone. So it had to do with remote sensing and GIS. So it powers how you make phone calls. So the moment you dial the person's number and then magically someone gets to receive that call and then you can have that interaction. How things are broadcasted electronically over your uh, over the internet, over your TV screens and all those things. So more like wireless tech and all those things from um, satellite um, communications to Google Maps, how Google Maps work. So saying these things sounds interesting. Like, guy, why don't you just follow with me? You really want doing the next Google Map update. I mean it's really interesting, but sorry, it's in Nigeria. It's not so it's not a career you want to do that. I mean, you know, we are still trying to find out where Boko Haram is. We've not even found uh, what's the name again. Bring back our girls since <laughs> God knows where. Is it now satellite set that's really strong? Interestingly, Nigeria has three satellites, but they are all lost in orbit. So that means <laughs> Yes, we have satellites, but they are almost in orbit. So, uh, yeah, um, that was that's like an interesting way to tell you what I studied back in school. So it sounds really good, but give it 10, 15, maybe 20 years before we are rock solid in it. But we, we are trying. We are doing it. I mean, we have uh, communities that talk about GIS. The most people are doing now is for um, uh, urban and regional planning. And uh, just really, really basic GIS applications here, yeah, but the future of GIS was still yet to be good. So, um, the next thing was what else can you do? Then, this was the question I asked myself. How could I, I people tell me that I am multi talented? Okay, what does it mean? And to be honest, when you say, when people tell you you're multi talented, it's just a nice way. I know you can choose to dis uh, disagree with me. But I feel when people say you are multi talented, they are just trying to tell you guys you are confused. <laughs> to, 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 to be honest, when people tell you you have many talents, they are just looking for a nice way to say you are confused. Where are you? Are you here? Are you here? So you can sew, you can bath, you can bake, you can cook. Where do I go to? Do you understand? So, really, it started from me. And my brother asked me, guys, so what exactly do you want to do? Then, um, like these other quotes that people say, they said that a master of uh, uh, a jack of all trades, master of all. Um, then there's this new one that started trending on, on Instagram. They started using it for reels and all. Then that the the, the audio, like more like um, completed the entire version. Master of all is better than a master of none, just to classify the talented people still. So I began reading and trying to understand myself. I'm still getting to my point, especially like here. Uh, Legal practice. The truth is, for multi talented people, your gift is not complete. You're not confused, but you just have an interesting way to combine things together to produce something that is unique. Let me talk about myself a bit. I know how to play instruments over five, six, seven instruments from the drums, guitar, piano, I can sing. Don't ask me to sing. <laughs> <laughs> and some other instruments, yeah. I can paint, I can draw, I can write, um, and some other things. So I, it's, it's safe to say I am multi-talented, and some other things I really don't want to talk about. So when I began to really understand myself, I found that what makes me unique is my ability to combine these things together. When I'm not in the office, I try to DJ, not professionally, but it's something that gives me joy. 
So I have virtual DJ on my laptop, or those of us that know virtual DJ, I have a user on my laptop. When I know there is no brief to attend to, or no clients disturbing me over the weekend, right? I love to watch movies, right? TV movies, try out new dishes. So, some way, somehow, I put it, uh, uh, um, cocktails, um, food, and then music. You understand? I have a couple of um, producers, friends, and, all, and I love to DJ. So, it's something I find as a hobby. I love to cook too, although it's stressful, but I enjoy it, especially when it, it's something that relieves me of my stress when I'm back at home. So I told myself something that what makes Jerry Jerry is his ability to combine all of these things together to form one person. So that means I am not one in a million, like some guys would say to try and toast you. You are not one in a million. No, you are one in one. None before, none to come. There can only be one version. If someone tells me you are one in a million, that means there are two in two million. There are three in three million. That means there is going to be one thousand in one billion. If you get my point, right? So when when people tell you you are one in a million, please don't buy that. You are one in one. They cannot. There can never be another category of you, right? You are not confused as a multi talented person. You just have an interesting way to combine skills together. To create something that brings me to one of the points I raised when I sent my profile to I'm going to, to put there. I believe in three things. First of all, I believe in skill hybridization. I'm going to explain that. I believe in the school of service. And this is one has said something that was really, really interesting. It's really not about you wanting to be called a CEO, you want to want to sack your boss and be the boss. No. It's more about service, right? The Bible talks about that. He who has a he who can't serve. Company. So it's about sales. And the last one, having the mindset of a salesman. The truth is, even if they employ you as a receptionist, as a gate man, as a CEO or whatever, it's your ability to help the business make more money or cut down on the expenses. So having the mindset of a salesman is what every employer is looking out for, regardless of what you study. It starts from how you can sell yourself to the HR. HR person interviewing you, it's that's if you want to go into working for people. On the other end, it also starts with how you can convince a particular client to give you money. So you're selling, regardless. Even the pastor that has a church, conversion for him is, is two things, right? I'm not trying to make the church sound like a business, but here is my point. A church that is doing well. You will, you will notice that from the, the population of his members. That is one. Two, the, the caliber of his members. So churches like Winners, churches like House of the Lord, you will see that, oh, these pastors are successful. Because you see that uh, it's a fast-growing church. So across all industries, whether business, religion, whether sports, for sports clubs, how they count success is how many trophies they've won in a season, right? The, how, how they spend money on, on, on their football, on their footballers and teammates and all those things. So, wherever you are, it's your ability to have the mindset of a salesman. That is why anybody will want to do business with you if you have a business or employ you if you want to be employed. Right? Every boardroom I've entered, every meeting I've had with people, whether government or not, they are asking, how, what, what, what is, how can this convert? And as a matter of fact, the kind of business that we do, that is advertising, it's your ability to sell ideas to people, right? What we have as a, as a product is our ideas. It's our ability to tell them this idea will make you money. Some can sound stupid, some can sound really interesting, some can sound, okay, what is this? I'll give you a brief example. So uh, one of the brands we worked on at the time for a launch, but then it was not approved. I was, I'm simply going to talk about rejection for those of us that are creative here. There are times when you want to push out a creative idea, maybe you're trying to design a kit and you send it, and the client is like, I don't like this design. And because you felt, oh, you spent hours trying to draw out the kit design or a dress design or something else, and the client is telling you he doesn't like it. How do you handle rejection? We get to that. So um, we thought about this thing for a client, and we're like, this is what every other person is doing. They are just putting billboards here and there, da, 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 da. It was one art event. And we were like, instead of printing the billboards, 
How about we just print a blank canvas? That is the, the, the paper, the paper itself. And then have artists, real artists, draw the prints on it. We are not going to use computer to create it. It was during many things that what will happen when we pause, it will dissolve the space and it will be stained. But people know that these billboards were actually hand drawn, not the regular ones that were going to be printed, it was going to be expensive. So because of cost, they cancelled it. Okay, good. The other one we talked about was they wanted to launch a food app, and then we're thinking of the best way to get people's attention. So one of the ideas we had was let's call a magician. So this was the job of the magician. Now, we spoke, we told him the brief, he said he can do it. This was what we were going to do. He would have anybody in the, in the, in the, in the public, in the crowd, to um, come use his phone or their phone, open the app, and then pick a meal from the app. We have, I think the app, the app has over 500 meals. So just pick any app, just pick any meal of your choice, and then he gets to create the food. You know how magicians do get stuff. And the project was saying it's good, but then the client was scared of the magic. Now, this is the interesting part. I'm sure, I don't know if maybe one of had some friends that are magicians, you know, to do some card tricks and all. The, the truth about those kind of things is it has an interesting look. Cool because of the people, what's happening, what's happening? Without you saying, gather around, gather around. What you see that people are gathering somewhere because there's a magician, you want to see how we do the show. Somewhere in your subconscious, you want to learn how he's doing that. Maybe it's a cat trick, maybe it's those simple, simple tricks he does here and then. And that was the attention we went to pull. The entrance, we already planned the entrance, he was going to disappear and appear from the car, blah, 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 blah. He was going to do all those things, right? This is all that maybe a table floating on the show that attended. How he gave it, I don't care, it's not my business. But the client was sort of, uh, should I say, religious, so he didn't believe in magic and blah, blah, blah. Was it a good idea? If, it, if, it, if, it, if you ask me again, yes. Because the truth is, when I tell people that the same way you could order, we, we use magic to um, show you how fast you could get the food to your hand. That's the same way you could get your food delivered to you when you just order on the app. Well, that does not mean we use magic to cook our food, you know. But anyway, that was another field idea. And some other ones which I don't want to like pause. So the three things I talked about earlier, which was um, skill hybridization. Is spirited service, being a servant, basically, serving people. And the last one being um, having the mindset of, of, of a salesman. Let's talk about skill habitualization. Now, as I said earlier, it's you're not confused as a multi-talented person. You just have a unique way of blending things together to create magic. Now, in, in the future of work, what people are looking out for, let me, let me, let me talk about employability before we talk about entrepreneurship. In the future of work, what people are actually looking for is people that have not just one talent or one skill, but a blend of skill. That is why when you look at job descriptions, they tell you it is this. <laughs> but then when you get hired, you see that it's more than that. But what keeps you there, even if you pass the interview, what keeps you there is because you will be able to, maybe it was from church fellowship, fellowship in school, because you were the secretary or you're the treasurer or you're the financial. Um, um, something that we will store the game. You find yourself in, in a new space and then they tell you to work on Excel. Maybe you learn Excel back in school, but because of church, you picked up that skill, right? Or maybe uh, you were told to anchor some events back in school. Maybe it's a fashion parade, it's a talk show, something, something here or there. You can effectively go and represent the company. Past experience is basic. So, hear me what I would say. It's good to focus on one thing, right? Especially if it's business. Focus on one thing as a business. But as a person, focus on hybridizing things together, right? You're not just learning things because of you want to learn them, but because you want to find a way of merging what you have here, what you have here, what you have here. Today, I find myself letting radio ads. I find myself letting uh, um, uh, movie scripts. I find myself letting um, um, copyrights, copies for billboards. I didn't study mass communication, but because I understand music, because at a point back then in school, I wasn't a choir, right? 
right? I know what music should sound like. Because back then in school, I had friends that performed like a boy band who go for music concerts and performed to, the, to other um, to, to students in other schools. That was a last experience. Because I was able to organize music trainings for, for people that wanted to learn the piano and it was successful. Those are little experiences that are built over time. So when I find myself in the workplace, I can just recall them real quick. It doesn't sound new to me anymore. Right? So whatever you're studying in school, uh, Mrs. Wama said something which was really brilliant. So <laughs> she said people said she was learning how to cook. Right? I don't know how she put it, but then what she was learning in school was actually more scientific than an artistic uh, 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 course. Now, call it whatever name you want to call it. Either you're a stripper or an exotic dancer. Either you are a housewife or the director of home affairs. Names don't matter, right? What matters is what exactly you're passionate about. So people might call you whatever name you want to call it. Till tomorrow, I don't see how to tell my, my dad, okay, this is what I'm doing here. Do you understand? He wonders, okay, what exactly do you do? Do I tell him we sell ideas? It doesn't make sense. But the truth is, that's what I do. So his own is, ah, they are the ones that put things on newspaper, or they are the ones that put commercials on TV. Whatever you want to call it, it's fine, right? People will call me this. But then, back to my main point. When you know that I have this somewhere, now what else do I need to add to make this even better? Let's talk about MTM a bit. So MTM came with everywhere you go. They focus solely on telecommunications and all. So over time, they saw that they have number one. They are they are like the they are Africa's number one tele telco company, right? With over millions of subscribers, more than Google, Airtel, and Etisala combined, right? They have more subscribers than other three telcos combined together. Servicing the most number of countries in Africa and all. So, when it was time for them to expand, they decided, to go, okay, what exactly can we do? Remember, we know them as everywhere you go. They came with another new message. I don't make some of us say, find it confusing. What is, what are we going to do? I don't think anybody has noticed that. Okay, because you know future. So, I'm just going to talk about it a bit. MTN has rebranded. MTN is no longer the blue, yellow, and red, and blue, and blue. MTN is not yellow and blue. So if you, if you open your social media and you go to MTN, you see that it's no longer the old logo you used to see. So let me just talk about that a bit. So MTN has evolved from being just a telecommunication company to becoming a tech advanced company. So that means people that were there before, when it was just a telecom company, they didn't have the right skills to grow with MTN. It will lead them off. When ATM machines were introduced, who were the first people to be, to be made of? Counters, tellers, those people that were fronts, they were always giving you money. So the people that stayed were people that okay, maybe they had another extra um, um, uh, or additional limit, give me whatever single money. They, they had something on the side that they could bring to the table, right? The truth is, tech will always replace things. There will always be growth advancements. Company to want to evolve, those that stay. The ones that are multi talented, so they can fit into any box. So today we are handling client services, tomorrow you are handling the creative process, next tomorrow you are in front of the customer, next tomorrow you are handling operations. You know a bit about these things, you can't know everything basically, right? But why anybody wants to keep you either as an employee is because you can fit into any task. Why anybody wants to do business with you is because you can handle any kind of pressure. Imagine if uh, Belmont kids could only do well velvet cakes. They would not sculpt with chocolate, fondant, butter icing, and all those things. So I had my sister make some. <laughs> <laughs> they could not do all those things. The truth is, they run out of business pretty soon, right? So, and not just cakes, now they are adding other pastries to it, right? Because <laughs> it's about how fluid you are. Bruce Lee said something. He said, be like water, be formless. They throw you into a bottle, you take the shape of the bottle. They throw you into a Jericho, you take the shape of the, of, of the Jericho. They throw you into a river, you are borderless. Do you understand? So, my first point, I think the first point that they made, skill habitation. You're not just learning because you want to learn and be a master of all these things, but because you know where you're going to and what are the relevant skills you need to have to keep you 
relevant, that's the word, to keep you relevant. So you know that you want to learn this skill. Do I need to take a tech-related course? Not tech-related degree. Here's the, here's the difference. When you focus on a degree, your problem is, I just want to get this degree and go. When you focus on the course, you focus on the information you get. That's why I don't like Coursera. Why? Because in the end, most people, they are just focused on the degree I'll get in the end. That is still back to schooling. So whether it's online or it's a UNN or it's a UNEC, we are just focused on the honors we get at the end. That is the certificate. In Yoruba, they call it Bali. That's the paper. Right? But when you shift your focus from the degree you get to the information you get, you can apply it anywhere. It was easy for me to switch from GIS or whatever I'm studying in school to what I'm doing now because I focus on the information. So there was a particular course that talked about photography, how satellites, how satellites are able to capture things that are millions of miles away. And you can tell the size of an object, you can tell the height of the beauty just from the shadow. You can tell time just by where the shadow is, those little, little things. Now, coming into communications, I can now direct a photographer. Remember, I never handled the lens before. When I know what 85 mm will do, I know what 50 mm will do, I know what 200 mm will do in terms of long range te te telephoto. I don't know my, my media people, in my extent, I'm able to relate with it. So, I didn't learn this thing, but because I have like a basic understanding of what school taught me, and I didn't focus on the degree. If I focus on the degree, my own is first class or second class, every other thing is not is, is irrelevant. I removed my mind from there to really learn something that I can apply anywhere, right? From how I was how I was supposed to present my, my IT experience to presenting my uh, final year project, right? Because you have to present to a board of professors. Those are little experiences that you take into the market. As little as it sounds, those are little experiences you take into the market. And people will begin to wonder, where did you work before? No, you just make sure you focus on the experience wherever you found yourself. Be it church, be it fellowship, be it a community or a, 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 a group of uh, uh, a project you're trying to work on in school, wherever. You focus on the experience, what you are learning, right? The next point is act of service or spirited service. My boss, I don't want to mention his name here. He saw that taught me something that I feel I knew before, but I didn't really pay attention to it, which is service. Let me be blunt with you, everybody here. At some point, you will leave us. At some point, you will clean people's shoes. At some point, they will use you as right. But if the one is you want to sack your boss, you won't go far. I'll tell you the truth. You won't go far. There are times my boss will call me by 2 a.m., 3 a.m., Jerry, I want you to do this. The truth is, it's my personal time. I can tell him, oh God, you pay me from 9 to 5. What are you, what are you, why are you calling me now? But I learned something here. Yeah. I've been in, I'm, I'm, I'm not based in anywhere. I just moved to anywhere about two years ago. So this is my first time in the East. I'm from Lagos. So I came to serve in anywhere. I got retained and now that I got my job, blah, 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 blah. In, in the space of two years, I got promoted to management staff where they had, there were other people that were there. Years before me, yeah. So I now ask my boss, why, why exactly these things? Why are you doing these things? Is it because I know much? Maybe I had previous experience, but really not that. It was because I was dependable. You could call me by 4, 5, 6 a.m., suddenly, somehow, except I don't want to pick a call. I'm, I'm, I'm online. So he said that he could confidently hand over tasks to me, go and sleep. And those things will happen. Now, how did I learn those skills? My my goal was I wanted to serve. As a core member, the truth is, ah, uh, you want to flex now. I mean, while other core members were always staying at home, I stayed in the copper's lodge. I mean, housing in any way is expensive, so I stayed in one of these uh, copper's lodge. So I paid five thousand per month instead of doing like a big boy going to look for my apartment that maybe spending no edible. Landlords now, maybe 300 k or 400 k jigger, so I didn't have that amount of money. So I stayed in one of these proper lodges and then shared water, just communal living and all. So um, while I would leave the office, I was going to the office Monday to Saturday. Sometimes after church, I would go back to the office because I needed to wrap up a few things before Monday. 
while some other core members were always skipping, I mean, compass will always be compass. The single student will always be student because they found job, right? Why they wanted to have fun, I mean, they were like, oh God, this is what we not in India, or, right? Even the, even the LGI at the time, uh, I only mentioned his name too. The attendee would sit down and be like, when it comes to work, put it here. Don't put it here. So that if it's too heavy, what do you do? You drop it. That's a gift they would tell you. Or there was a time my mom called me and she was like, don't be a local champion where you are. Leave there. Come to KPMG. Let me sort of bring this for you. KPMG is a good company. Look, starting salary is like 480, 500, need no more than that. Do you understand? Beautiful place. And I slammed the people on my CV. What X KPMG? Ah, people that don't, I don't know if people make KPMG. Like, hey, I know that it's good. So all those things didn't quite happen. Even to, today, I'm wondering why am I still here in any way? But that's story from that day. Let me get back to my point. So um, while other core members were skipping classes, so skipping work, trying to be cool, trying to be bougie, wearing the best logo and all those things, I focused on serving the boss, not I service. No. Not because I wanted him to see me, but because there was something he knew that I needed to know. He has been in business for years. He has not crushed. He has closed shop and reopened it twice. So if he can close shop, open it, close shop, open it, and he's still doing well and still handling great accounts, this guy knows something I don't know. So let's stay there and be there. Some people think, well, let, let me talk about faith. I don't think we're all Christians here, but let me talk about that. So, when we talk about faith, we talk about taking the next step to that God will lead your way, right? So just go. Faith also means aim. Let, let's use Abraham, for example. So faith now could be uh, get on the camera, go forward. Then there's something for you in the future, step forward. But faith for him there was stay with your wife, stay there. Faith for Joseph would have been leave your brothers and preparing a place for you. Move. I have a better place for you, so just leave your family and move. No. Faith for Joseph there would stay with your family. You will move from the pit to the prison to the palace. So why are we always thinking of mountain moving faith? Just climb the world, move on top of the world. There's faith like a seed when you are buried. And you stay there for days before you sprout. So I don't want us to always think of that one, that, that mountain moving faith where change the world, you can start something on your own, believe in the unseen, blah, blah, blah. But faith also means staying. Faith also means waiting. I think the Bible calls it long-suffering. Waiting there, right? So that is, that is the end of that. So thank you for listening to that. So service means stooping low, wiping people's butts, they will use you as a they use, I'm being blunt, they will use you as a man. There are times, let me, let me talk about my experience, but let me just get straight to my point. You would need to leak ass. You need to say yes, sir. Even to when it's not convenient for you. But because your goal is you really want to serve, you really want to learn something. And that is one virtue any employer will root for in anybody and keep them. When it's time to retrench, there are times business to have high and lows, and I want to keep people off. The company, the first, remember the first thing I said about skill hybridization? We look at the most useless set of staff members that they have, who is contributing the least. So the company is moving from this to this. Okay, who are the people that have the skills that can pivot with the company? Okay, these people, all they can do is like, we are moving to AI. They don't understand AI, keep them out. Oh, this will be the only just to give you cash. We are moving to ATM, keep them out. They don't understand ATM, keep them out. Well, because you understand the mix of both, they're like, okay, this person can go with us. So, skill that we some check. Two, who will continue to wipe our butt? Bosses will be boss, let's be back from. Who will continue to sell us? Okay, this one is not proud, this one can serve, this one is, this one is obedient, let's keep it. Same thing for businesses. There are times when we've had, I mean, we're still a growing company. There's a time, there are times when we've had clients think that they are losing their money to grow. But after all the old English you've spoken, we still have a way of saying, we are still your boys. Sir, mommy said something. Is it my mom's boy, mommy? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I stayed in the river land, so we are giving her respect and the whole thing. So she said something and she was like, when clients come, when some customers come to into a store, whether you're older or younger, it's sir or it's ma. 
It's the act, it's the heart of a servant. You want to serve people. That's the only way you can come on top. That is the only way. So we've talked about the first one, talked about the second one, the last one. The mind of a salesman. Like I said, whether you're hired as the gate man, the receptionist, whatever you're hired as, if you can't contribute to the revenue of the company, that's if you are hired, or that's hired as a, as a staff. And if you can't contribute to the revenue of a client, revenue might not be monetary this time around, it could be the experience for, for, for products like fashion, um, food, and all those things, it's more experience. If they can't get a premium value from, from you, there is no point of doing business with you. There is really no point doing business with you. So it's your ability to sell things. It starts from selling yourself. Which brings me to my next point. Appearance, behavior, and your level of communication. The truth is, it's, they, they, they'll tell you, don't judge a book by its cover. When it comes to people, it's different. For the guys, I'm going to say something. When someone sees you, either a man or a woman, but you walk into a business setting, the first thing they notice about you is your shoes. Not your hair, not your shirt, not your perfume. You'll have to get really close to you to know the perfume. They start from your shoes. Oh, these guys are wearing nice shoes. Good. And I know as, as, as students, we wanted to wear thick soles because I mean, we would trek and all those things. So we want to wear thick soles. When you come to the business setting, um, setting we are wearing thin soles because you must make. You see this? Bah, bah, bah. That is when, when you walk into any, any, any space. People know that okay, you're wearing shoes, not those thick boots that people wear. That is that is one of the things that I just want to say. It's not really the most important thing, but what I want you to take home is appearance. You invest so much in it. Not to there is thing people say, I can't remember the, the, the way they put it, but um, I can't remember it, but it talks about fake it till you make it, yes. I'm not saying fake it till you make it. There are sustainable cheap alternatives to dressing well. And the thing is, nobody will ask you how much you got the shirt. Nobody will ask you how much you got the shirt, but is your creating your packaging that sells you of last last. Nobody will ask you what perfume you're using. They will tell you it smells nice. Right. Nobody will ask you when did you get the shirt. They just tell you your shoes is nice. So nobody really cares about where you get stuff. Or where, where their compliment stuff is is you look good and that's the end of it. So investing so much in your is really key. The next one is behavior. Take time to take courses on or classes on ethics, right? How to serve a bottle of champagne into a wine glass, how to uh, know if your wine is fresh or not, how to use cutleries. If you're invited for an English breakfast, where do you start from for your, for your when I mean uh, when you when your time when it's time to eat the meal um three a three course meal what does it actually mean? So when you're invited to uh, dinners, you're dressing, you don't wear jeans and polo to a dinner event. You don't wear jeans and polo to a black tie event. Those things are not taught in school. Remember I started by saying, don't let your schooling get in the way of your education. Those things are not taught in school. The school just tests your brilliance, your ability to remember what they taught you in the classroom. Yeah. Education shows you how you have to be street smart. When you speak to adults, when you have to, when you have to interact with adults, you have to be like one of them. When you're with a businessman, you have to talk like them. When you're with rich people, you speak in dollars. When you're with the other um, 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 spectrum of, of, of people, you speak like them. That's the only way you can sustain those relationships. You have to be street smart. Street smart, street smartness is not taught to you in school. You learn it on the streets. That is the education you need to invest in, right? What is a black tie event? When you go for a black tie event, it means all the men must wear the same thing. The, 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 the spotlight isn't on the men, it's on the ladies' gowns. So that is why you would see those wonderful dresses for those events that people wear. When it's called a black tie event, it just means we are paying more respect to the women here. The, wife, the, the wives of the men, the girlfriends, all the women people here. So they, they are allowed to wear the most flamboyant ball gowns, flamboyant red dresses, Blah 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 blah, all those things. But for guys, just come in uniform, black tie, right? I'm going to talk about color. There is this sensual relationship with the color red. 
That is why in every movie, most movies, when you watch most movies, there's always the lady in a red dress in a bar. Because some way, somehow, people think that I will trust you when you wear the color red. Maybe. <laughs> so even the same thing for men, right? Men with red ties are found to be more romantic. Guys would would rather kiss a lady with a red lipstick than with a lady than a lady without and it's just bare. Right? So those are some of the things that are not taught in school, but because you are now focusing on social peace, you learn those things. So that is behavior. So take out time to learn things on ethics, how to treat a lady, how to be a gentleman when you're walking with a lady on the streets, you don't allow her to stay by the roadside, right? You open the door for the lady and you just be a gentleman basically. So the last one being communication, invest in how you talk, right? You might have a powerful message, but how you say it really matters. Right, the, 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 the message is as important as how you say it. So take time to really um, invest in public speaking, um, talking to people, pitching. The most, I think my most difficult job is pitching ideas because if it's not powerful enough, they don't care. If they can't understand it on the spot, many times you have about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to pitch an entire six months, eight months campaign. So if you can't do that, virtually, I mean, most of the time, these clients are not even in the so you have to do it over a Zoom meeting or a Google meet virtual call. So if you can't wow them on the spot, so you've lost the account, right? So that means we, or me now, I, I have to invest so much in my communication, take classes on that, right? Like I said, we are not focusing on the degree, degrees discount. The most important part is the knowledge and how you use it in the end. So if you walk into you for, for an interview, you know how to dress, you know how to greet, you know how to talk, you know how to sell yourself. That, those are the things they would see in you if you are going to be employed or if someone wants to do business with you. Right. So let's talk about creating that for the next, let's say, um, 20 minutes. As human beings, Creativity is like in its normal nature. But then there are an, except, an exceptional few that get to turn it into a business. Everybody is creative, everybody thinks they're creative once you come to a job. Right? You notice know, that coming up with a tagline, when it was uh, it is a lot, now you're talking. Or when it was uh, each other, I don't know if you can remember some brand taglines here. Yeah, anyone at all? Pick it's in you. You look so simple. It's a it's, can we think of it? Somebody talk of it, right? So creativity looks like an easy job until it becomes your job. So you're starting out in the creative media space. What can you do? I've had conversations with people that study the mass communication and they're like, ah. I ask them where you want to go. You don't tell me radio radio house, they tell me TV or they tell me newspaper. Okay. Those three platforms are actually die. Podcasting media is going down. We are now in new media, which is social media and digital media. So, sorry. Okay. Um, new media, so it's evolving, right? So, where can I find myself? Now, there is the advertising the industry that talks about uh, sales, marketing, marketing and advertising. That is one industry you can look at. The, if you're going to start your career there, there is a role of an account executive. So this is the function of an account executive. Okay, the big um, The role is make sure your client looks good and feels good when he comes into your business, into your into the office. So he's calm, he's ready to accept whatever rubbish you're going to sell to him. So imagine, imagine um, sorry, no, I'm going to use your business as an example here. So imagine a client comes into your store and then from the receptionist is already bad customer service. The truth is, whatever new cake design you want to pitch, he wouldn't like it or she wouldn't like it because the experience, the bad experience started from the door. So it's the job of the account executive to say, I want to make sure you love every single thing you tell me. So it could start with a bottle of champagne at the doorstep. It's about the customer experience. It could start with um, getting to know your name. There are, there are a couple of ways to do these things, but then, like, like I was saying, the advertising age, um, industry, there is a role of the account executive, which is to make sure the client is happy. There is a role of the copywriter, which everybody knows. So their job is to write those copies. Those it's in you, the, the peaks it's in you uh, uh, tagline, 
the MTNs everywhere go, Glow, Unlimited, Amoru Songs, those are their jobs. They write those sweet, excellent, beautiful copies that you see like. 